Mother Nature has a knack for fashioning beasts beyond our wildest imagination. Great and small, cute and scary, but she also has a dark and twisted side. What you're about to see and learn in this video will surely shock you. Because the new beasts that are about to move into this peculiar contraption are some of the most ancient and almost mythological social animals I have ever introduced on this channel. Ladies and gents, gather round and have a seat and witness the dark side of the Antiverse. Welcome to the Ant Canada Ant Channel. Enjoy. AC family, let's get to it. Yes, we've got yet another new colony of ants joining us this week. But I guarantee these ants are unlike anything you've ever seen before. I quite literally have only heard about these ants in books, ironically. But when the opportunity to keep a real colony of these oh-so-fabled ants came to me, I could not pass up the chance. But what you will learn and witness in this video is shocking and to the best of my knowledge, has never been documented in science before, especially not in video. This will also be one of those videos, AC family, where we make some new scientific discoveries valuable to ant science. Yes, we the AC family, once again, will be the first in the world to see and discover some biological and behavioral things about these incredible and savage ants. So as always, keep on watching until the end. What you see before you is a new piece of ant technology, something we at Ants Canada have been working on, our newest of ant inventions. We call it the ant tower. To be able to truly appreciate the beasts of this video, we would be needing this ant tower to film them, which would also become their home. Yes, it's an ant farm, but don't be fooled by its simplistic design. We've souped it up with some awesome ant keeping engineering. But first, we need to make this empty ant tower more inhabitable for our new beasts. So I added in some soil. And now, to create the start of the subterranean layer in which our beasts shall reside and roost, I plunged a Q-tip through the earth and fashioned them a cavern fit for a monster. No, fit for a family of monsters. <laughs> Next, I added some full blades of grass, some stones, some sphagnum moss, and a twig. Now to add a few drops of water to moisten the soil. And ah, much better now. I think our beasts will love their new territories, wouldn't you say? AC family, I named this new ant territory the Blood Tower. Let me show you around. In case you were wondering what this red layer is all about, our beasts love nesting in darkness and hate the light in areas they retreat to rest. And like many ants, they also happen to be blind to red light. So this red transparent layer will fool our beasts into thinking they are cloaked in darkness just as they like it. But giving us a bit of visibility, I moved to the lower levels of the ant tower to inject some life-giving water which would evaporate and hydrate the beast's living quarters above through tiny micro holes in the hydration chamber's roof. All right there. And now we see family, the time has come to meet and move in our beasts. The blood tower was ready. At the back of the ant tower were three ports, two entrance ports, one at the back there, which is plugged up with an AC plug to keep our beasts from escaping. And this second port through which our beasts will be entering the blood tower. That smaller top port is for adding wind, if needed, via a fish tank air pump, but we won't be needing that for this colony. We need the air in this ant tower to be misty and still. So here we go, guys. Let's unleash our beasts into the newly created blood tower. I fastened their containment test tube to the back of the ant tower, and immediately, the beasts spilled out 
into the territories. AC family, I am pleased to present to you the infamous and frightening Dracula ants of the genus Stigmatoma. These beasts are just insane. The colony is now filing in and take a look at those crazy mandibles. They're like two long fangs sticking out of their face. But each of those mandibles has a row of sharp teeth. Look at them swarming and surveying the Blood Tower's grounds. And it looks like they found our cavern. Now let me explain why these Dracula ants are super unique and oh so dark. Dracula ants are an ancient group of predaceous ants that are actually found worldwide. They get their name not from their long fang-like mandibles, but from their very unique feeding habits. So AC family, get this. Dracula ants, allegedly, are not capable of consuming solid foods, nor are they capable of trophallaxis, i.e. the transfer of food socially from mouth to mouth, a process common to nearly all social insects. But what's crazy is that the way adult Dracula worker ants eat is they feed solid food to their larvae and then, believe it or not, proceed to practice a non-lethal version of cannibalism. AC family, you won't believe this, but Dracula ants actually bite and drink the blood of their own larvae. Isn't that crazy? They create an incision in the skin of the larvae and drink up the hemolymph, the technical term for insect blood, that bleeds out of these wounds. And that is how adult Dracula ants feed and how the species got their name. They are well-known blood feeders in the ant world. Isn't that just crazy? That's sister adult ants feeding from the blood of their younger sibling larvae. As for who's laying the eggs, some species of Dracula ants have queens, but I believe this species to be one that has gamergates, i.e. a mated dominant worker ant who assumes the role of egg layer, like our Black Panthers. They were moving in the last of the larvae now. It seems the ants were planning on moving in the pupae last. The ants were clearly settling in to the blood tower, their new home, as planned. I was so happy about this. And look, some of the stones looked like teeth, which I found to be rather fitting for a Dracula ant home. They were also busy beginning their excavation and expansion of the tunnel we made for them. Our plans were working out perfectly. Now one thing that concerned me though, was that these ants are known to specialize on preying on centipedes. But only thing is, I don't have any centipedes to feed them, and I wasn't about to go hunting for centipedes in the jungle every day to feed them either. But one thing I did have were superworms. I wonder if they would eat them, or rather, bring the superworm to the babies and then suck their blood. Oh, the idea was blood curdling and exciting. Let's try it. I opened the food chute at the top of the ant tower and placed in a split superworm. The Dracula ants came to inspect the sudden foreign meat that had fallen from the sky. They looked so careful and curious about it. Personally, I was expecting them to ferociously pounce on it immediately. But to my surprise, they seemed rather cautious around it and lightly touched the superworm with their antennae to smell it. A few minutes later, one ant finally decided to sting it with her stinger. And later, the ants began to bury the superworm. But seeing all this, to me it did seem the ants weren't super thrilled about superworms as a prey item. Maybe they would have a taste for roaches? I tossed in half a roach nymph and watched. An ant took some baby lunges at it. But then what I saw next completely shocked me. The ant began to feed on the roach. It looked to me like the worker was drinking the roach's splattered hemolymph. More ants began to join in drinking the juices spilled from the roach. And one ant even came to lick the surface of the superworm. Here we were, AC family, witnessing firsthand evidence that these Dracula ants actually do eat other insects and not just their own larvae's blood. It was still unclear whether or not the ants were eating the gooey guts of the prey too. But whatever the case, we just made a new scientific discovery, AC family. High five! Mark the date. We saw it first. And just when I thought that was the epitome of our scientific discoveries, little did I know we were about to film and witness yet another new fact about these Dracula ants. AC family, have a look at this cocoon. This species of ant is the cocoon spinning type, which means when the larvae are ready to pupate, they spin these cocoon cases to protect them through the pupal stage as they develop into adult ants. But then, I noticed this worker 
tearing open a hole in one of the cocoons. And oh my, there was even a developing pupa inside. The worker continued to tear a larger hole into the cocoon, and it did seem that the pupa wasn't even fully developed. And then suddenly, the worker went in to drink from the exposed pupa. When I realized what was happening, my jaw hit the floor. OMG, AC family, these Dracula ants were actually drinking the blood of the pupae too. And not just their larvae as indicated by past research. Isn't that just incredible? AC family, we made yet another valuable discovery on the biology of these Dracula ants. Mark the date. We saw it first. Dracula ants also feed from the blood of their pupae. I watched as several workers came to lap up and feed from the pupal blood wound. The ants then proceeded to carry this bleeding cocoon into the nest, where I assume it would continue to nourish its sisters. Just insane! But AC family, that's not all. A third discovery. I placed some hard-boiled egg yolk into the blood tower. And to my surprise, the ants began to feed from it. What? For sure there was no trace of blood in this yolk, insect or otherwise. So this suggested then that the ants actually can eat solids. They've got the tools to process even solid food. AC family, mark the date. We saw it first. I decided to leave the ants alone for a few hours while they continue to move in the remaining cocoons and check up on them later. A few hours later, I came back to check on the Dracula ants. But little did I know, we were in for a mind-blowing sight. The ants seemed to be droning over the roach and superworm, but upon closer inspection, I saw larvae. Wow! The ants had brought the larvae to the surface to feed on the prey carcasses. Wow, now we know why the ants were burying the prey. They had every intention of placing the larvae around it to feed, and the soil walls acted like blankets to cradle and protect the feeding young. I was in awe. The larvae were so mobile and very maggot-like in demeanor, and it did look like the larvae were not just drinking the gooey liquidy parts. It seemed like the larvae could get at the solid parts as well. It made perfect sense that the ants decided to bring the larvae to the prey item. Because again, these ants can transfer food mouth to mouth via a social stomach like most ordinary ants. So the prey either needed to be dragged into the nest to the young, or in this case, because there probably wasn't a lot of space in their nest which was undergoing construction, the ants had to bring the larvae to the prey. And when one of the larvae was full, an adult worker came along to pluck it from its place and carry it back into the nest. Where it assumingly would be wounded and its blood drank up by its older sisters. Just incredible, right EC family? I watched for hours as they one by one removed the larvae who had had their fill from the roach to take them into the depths of the nest to assumingly proceed to feed the workers their freshly nourished blood. I feel the workers of this particular species of Dracula ant do eat semi-solid foods, but perhaps their main source of food is blood, either their own youngs or that of freshly killed insects. The next morning, the Dracula ants had all settled in. I noticed that they had created an ant hill from their excavations and had nest openings in several locations. They were starting to wake up now to start their day. I removed the red film to see if we could see any of the action inside the nest. Right away, I saw some tunnels with cocoons and workers inside. There was also a tunnel here under these stones and a tunnel here under these stones. But these tunnels seemed to all branch out from the main cavern we created for them before they moved in. As the colony grows, the tunnels and chambers will become larger and more defined so we'll be able to see the ants better in their nest. Sadly, in just the three days I've had them, I wasn't able to film the adult Dracula ants bleeding and drinking the larvae's blood. But what we had seen so far was, in my mind, already pretty groundbreaking in the world of myrmecology. I resolved to continue feeding roaches, completely split open, so the workers could feed from their gooey insides and blood. Overall, I find these Dracula ants pretty remarkable. 
They're truly unlike any other ant I've ever kept. And the fact that we made some pretty amazing ant discoveries today filled my heart with joy. We're all myrmecologists on the brink of ant discovery. We discovered these Dracula ants feed from the blood of not only their larvae, but also that of other insects, as well as their own pupae. We found that these ants actually can eat solids, and that the ants are willing to bring their young up to the surface to feed on prey cradled in beds of soil. I promise to keep a close lens to these Dracula ants, to see if I can shoot them drinking larval blood, and hopefully catch some more scientific Dracula ant discoveries. All right, AC family, you know what's next. What should we name this epic colony of Dracula ants? Leave your name suggestions in the comments, and I will choose my favorites for us to vote on in a future video. I have some epic plans for this Dracula ant colony, which currently doesn't take up too much space. The ants have already begun to show signs of wanting an expansion, so I'm planning on connecting more ant towers, and change their territory name from the Blood Tower to the Blood Castle. Perhaps even add a grand Draculean courtyard, designed like a scary forest. What do you guys think? Overall, I loved watching the ants and decided that these quote-unquote beasts weren't the bloodthirsty and shadowy monster ants I thought they would be. They were just unique ants with a unique lifestyle and feeding behavior. Actually, looking at them much more closely, I found them to be kind of cute. Watching them move around in an almost stealthy, slithering manner and feeding within the blood tower was super satisfying. I do plan on showing this video to my myrmecologist friends to get their take on the neat things we discovered together this week. This week, we discovered that these vampires were not monsters, but unique and cool friends. Mark the date, AC family. It's Ant Love forever. And now about those termites. <laughs> AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? Now I cannot count how many of you have been asking, no, demanding for an update on the termite pair we caught a few months ago in our previous video, Ants vs Termites. And well, I finally got an update for you. So hit that subscribe button and bell icon now so you don't miss out on the termite craziness ahead. And hit the like button every single time, including now. And if you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you would just like to watch some extended play footage of the Dracula ants living in their new home, the Blood Tower. Watching these gorgeous ants is pretty amazing and super satisfying to watch. And before we proceed to the AC question of the week, I'd like to plug my daily vlogging channel, daily vlogs which have become a full out bird dad channel as I am now raising a baby African gray parrot. If you love birds, I'd love for you to meet my new cute little bird. She's a handful, but I love her, and I think you would too. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what are the pit organs for on the lips of some snakes? Congratulations to Dominic the Rat and Animal Guy, who correctly answered, the pit organs on the lips of some snakes are for sensing heat from prey animals. Congratulations Dominic, you just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what do Dracula ants have in common with our black panthers, i.e. diachema ants? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.